What's up, everybody? Today, we're going to be talking some New York Giants football, some G-Men, to be exact, uh, and their 2022 NFL season. Also, just want to apologize up front if you can hear some background noise going on in my hallway. I'm shooting these videos um, a little earlier in the night, so it's going to be a little more no noisy in the hallway. Um, part of this reason is I don't want to be falling asleep, yawning for you guys, making, you know, simple mistakes. I um, want to give you guys the best content out there, so that's why I'm trying to record earlier. Um, but yeah, anyways, let's get into it. So, the New York Giants season went a lot better than I think anyone could have thought. Myself included, Giants fans included, anyone in the league included, probably even Daniel Jones and Brian Dable included. Um... You know, my expectations for this team coming into this season were their division. At the time, I thought this. Their division's so bad, they could win it. Why not? I mean, they have some offensive pieces. O-line's better than it gets credit for. I like a lot of their defensive guys. Saquon's back. And I thought Brian Dable was going to be an excellent coach, even in year one. Um, I also thought they could finish third in their division. And that's what they ended up doing. Uh, I'm going to get mocked for this, but oh, this is embarrassing. I can't believe I'm even admitting this, but I want to be honest with you guys. The way I saw the NFC East going was Washington 1, Philly 2, Giants 3, Dallas 4. So go ahead, laugh now. Just don't downvote. I'm just kidding. I don't care what you do. I kind of do, but anyways, getting off topic again. So but what the Giants were able to do... I mean, Brian Dable made Daniel Jones look interesting. I mean, I've never been a fan of Daniel Jones. I thought it was absolutely absurd that uh, Dave Gettleman took him sixth overall back in 2019. Um, I, for one, would have taken the late Dwayne Haskins, but, you know, is what it is. I wanted you to move. I wanted the Giants to move off Daniel Jones every single year, and I, I still want them to move off of him this year, but it sounds like they're not going to do that. It sounds like he's going to get a contract extension. Um, which I'm really surprised, especially considering it's a new regime and he's not Dable's guy or the GM's guy. Um, but John Mara, the owner, seems to love him, so I guess that's all that matters, you know? All these rich owners. But anyways, um, I just want to talk what Brian Dable was able to do. Let's even go back further. What he was able to do when he was the offensive coordinator of Buffalo. He cleaned up Josh Allen. Josh Allen was this raw talent. Sure, he was probably the best prospect we've like ever seen in the last couple of years. I mean, doesn't do anything really productive in college, but six seven, tallest quarterback in the league, best arm in the league, strongest arm, and he's one heck of an athlete. But he's still raw, he's not accurate, he's turnover. Um, running too much, getting hit too much, and Brian Dable was able to clean that up. And then he did the unthinkable, and he made Daniel Jones look, like I said, competent. I mean, that just speaks to the volume of how great Brian Dable is. Coach of the year, I know I said in a previous video I thought Mike Daniel should have been in consideration, but I have no argument to against Dable getting it. I don't have a problem with Brian Dable getting it at all for what he was able to do with the Giants. Um, and the fact that they went on the road and won a playoff game with not a lot of weapons because their weapons got hurt, receivers and tight ends got hurt, that's just more shocking than ever. And I know they got blown out against Philly in the divisional round. Okay, it's Philly. Arguably one of the best rosters in the league. It is one of the best rosters in the league, arguably the best. Um, they were at home off a of bye against Daniel Jones. I mean, come on. Still an impressive season for the Giants. But the problem is they're setting themselves up for failure in the future if Daniel Jones remains their quarterback. I'd, I'd, go, off, I'd go after Derek Carr, Jimmy Garoppolo, go after anybody but Daniel Jones. Seriously, I, I don't know about Tua because Tua gets hurt a lot, but if Tua didn't get hurt, I, you know how I feel about Tua. You heard me talking about him in the previous videos. Um, if Tua's healthy, I'd take Tua over Daniel Jones. I mean, that's how much I dislike Daniel Jones. I don't see anything special from him. I'm, I just don't. 
and you even look at the stat line, his stats weren't, weren't impressive. They weren't. He didn't have a lot of touchdowns. Turnovers, mm, um, not a lot of yards, not a lot of yards per attempt. Low completion percentage, I mean, it is what it is. I thought the Giants would be moving off Daniel Jones this year. But it sounds like not, and therefore, I have to say the Giants' future, as of right now, does not look bright. Heard, we've heard stuff like this before. I mean, Daniel Jones could walk if he wanted to. They technically could use the franchise tag him, but you're not franchise tagging Daniel Jones. He's either going to walk or agree to your deal. Um, yeah, it, it sounds like he's coming back. Don't like the move, but what do I know? Just a freshman in college. Um, but yeah, is what it is. Sorry, Giants fans, for those of you who I think, and there's most of you, who I think don't like Daniel Jones. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this video. More content coming up. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and see ya.